Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I was playing around with the Scripter MIDI Effects plugin in Logic, and I was playing around with this preset called the MIDI to Plugin Parameters preset, and I just wanted to show this off to you guys in this video because it's a really cool effect that allows you to use one of your uh, CCs, your continuous controllers on your MIDI controller, like the modulation wheel, for example, and you can control multiple plugin parameters both audio effects plugins as well as software instruments. Now there's kind of a lack of Scripter tutorials on YouTube. I haven't covered the Scripter plugin at all on my channel up until this point. Um, and part of that's just because I, I don't know JavaScript. Uh, one of the things about the Scripter MIDI effects plugins, you can click here where it says open script and editor. You can actually type in and code your own MIDI effects. So that's really cool, uh, but I don't know JavaScript. I don't know what any of this really means. Um, however, there are some cool presets up here that you can pick from, and MIDI to plugin parameters is one that I thought was pretty cool. So I've got um, Alchemy pulled up here, and it just the patch just sounds like this. And this patch is already reacting to the modulation wheel. So with the mod wheel down, it's a bit softer, more filtered sounding. With the mod wheel up, it's got a bit of a brighter sound to it. So what you can do with this MIDI to plugin parameters, um, MIDI uh, effects plugin, is you can pair a MIDI continuous controller of your choice to various effects plugins. So I can use my modulation wheel not only to control some of the effects that are already preset in this alchemy patch, but also some audio effects that I place on the channel strip. So for example, if I throw some reverb on here, I'll just go with the chroma verb here, and I'll choose the synth hall. What I can do is I can pair, pair the modulation wheel to a target. So if I click on target one here, and then choose learn plugin parameter, and then I go and click on a parameter within this plugin, like the decay time of the reverb here, you'll see that it learns the decay time of the chroma verb plugin. So now when I move my modulation wheel up and down, you'll see that the decay time of the reverb moves as well. So I probably don't want the decay time of the reverb to be up in, you know, the 100, milli uh, 100 seconds territory. Probably want it to be a little more, um, a little lower than that, just so it doesn't carry on forever. So one thing you can do is you can control the minimum and maximum range for any of the output targets. So if I pull up the minimum and pull down the maximum, if I pull the modulation wheel all the way down, you'll see that the decay time doesn't go all the way down. If I pull it all the way up, it doesn't go all the way up either. So this allows you to sort of set a range for that modulation. Now, if I want to invert the control, I can do this. I can pull the minimum up and the maximum down. So now when I pull the modulation wheel up, the decay time goes down. When I pull the modulation wheel down, the decay time actually goes up. So you can invert controls that way as well. So let's try that out. Let's add another effect. Let's add some delay. I'll add the stereo delay. Let's learn a new plugin parameter here. Let's uh, learn the output mix of the left channel. And let's also learn the output mix of the right channel. There we go. So now I can control the wet dry balance of both channels of the delay. So if I pull this down, there's no delay. If I pull it up, there's more delay. And again, we can invert this. We could pull the minimum up, the maximum down for both of these. So because we had that chroma verb effect in here as well, effectively when I pull the modulation wheel up, I'm making the reverb larger but pulling the delay down. When I pull the modulation wheel down, I'm making the reverb smaller but pulling up the delay.
Let's not use the stereo delay. Let's try something different. Let's try the tape delay. And the reason why I'm using the tape delay is I just want a single uh, delay and feedback control. Um, so for target two here, I'm gonna go learn plugin parameter again. Let's learn the feedback this time. So right now this is still inverted. Let's flip this and let's make sure that the feedback isn't going to 600%. Let's go with something uh, a little more tame. 76, let's get a little over 100, yeah. There we go. It's like 200 is all the way up. So you could use the modulation wheel along with the reverb effect to get that uh, sort of feedback buildup effect. Let me try flipping the chroma verb and the tape delay. So both of them are there, I just changed their order. Let's filter the delay a little bit here. So there I was just using the modulation wheel to add in more of that sort of feedback loop, uh, basically going above 100% feedback and then coming back off of that in between playing different phrases. Let's add another reverb to this. Um, yeah, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to throw Shimmer on here. I love Shimmer. Um, and let's control something within Shimmer as well. Let's make target three the mix control here. And I don't want this to be too wide. We'll make it more narrow. Now another cool thing about this is when you record in your MIDI information or you record in your modulation wheel, all three of these parameters, up to four parameters actually, will be controlled by a single MIDI parameter. So I don't need to go in and write in any of these individual controls. I can control them all at once with a single MIDI controller. You don't even have to turn on any of your live automation modes for this. If I open this up and open up my region automation here, you'll see just the modulation wheel automation that was drawn in as region automation. You don't actually have to go in and turn on any of the track automation or use any of the automation modes to control the parameters individually, because again, a single MIDI controller, the modulation wheel, is controlling all three of these. So this scripter preset can be a really cool sound design tool, a really cool MIDI a recording tool as well. I'll try to get to some of the other uh, MIDI presets and show you how to use them 
um, if you guys would like to see that. So if you would, just let me know. I hope you guys have been enjoying these sound design videos. It seems like everyone seems to really like them. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other sound design ideas that uh, you'd be interested in and seeing demonstrated in Logic. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can also check me out at Patreon. Thanks for the support, and thanks for watching.